So our next presenter, I, I must say I have a big competition with him because we keep uh, competing who is the tallest guy in the industry. So Menachem Sevdarmish uh, with his uh, very peculiar Israeli Hebrew accent, he's going to make us a great presentation as he yes. usually does. What? He's still taking care of some technical stuff. He has been in the industry since the dinosaur era. Uh, he opened the first gemological laboratory in Israel back in uh, 1974. So it's really in the Mesozoic. And uh, he's, uh, as you might know, he's the creator of the, uh, uh, as he says, Gemi Wizard, the Gemi Wizard, the color classification system, a very clever way of communicating color on screen. So ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for this the tall guy, Menachem Sevdarmish. I knew we'll talk about our heights in the end, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, today I'm going to explore with you color trends before the corona, during the corona, and after the corona. First of all, uh, what is the core of our system? We uh, take uh, images and analyze them. And as you see here, underneath the image, that's what we call the color DNA. And uh, this uh, information is gathered together to have the average color that we analyze, the dominant color, and the secondary color. So like that, we can come with a lot of information about all sorts of images of gems that we meet all around the world in platforms, in uh, websites, and uh, through our uh, expert, which they show us the images and we analyze. What kind of data mining we did for this and other uh, research. We have over 20 million online gem records, thousands of gemological reports, which we analyze together with the, and I'm talking only about color and the aspects of the color. We interview dealers also to get their impact on the um, uh, colors and uh, traditions and trends. And we did uh, a lot of uh, trade show surveys. So we gathered tremendous amount of big data. Each one of these gems within the big data not only had an image, but uh, had also gem data records with it, like the gem type, the color, the location, the season. And sometimes we even have the age of the person that, oh, that bought it. So we got, apart from the color, the volume of the data, which helped us to get some insights. First of all, geographical trends which we saw in the last few years. In the North America, the regular demand for ruby, sapphires and emeralds of various qualities. Great demand for Paraiba and Aqua. And also we started seeing growing demand for light pastel colors and mixtures of odd colors, light ones. In China and in the Far East, the regular demand for top quality ruby, sapphire, and emeralds. And growing demand for what our friends from Guild called verdant uh, quality uh, emerald. And a crazy demand for spinels of this amazing uh, uh, sparkling uh, red color of various um, uh, grades. Uh, however, from time to time, we also got demand for lighter material, but 
we found that the China is more conservative in its color perceptions. Europe is something in between, regular demand for ruby, sapphire, and emerald, the entrance of pastel colors, and those colors that you see here, the light colors, we started seeing in the uh, designs of usually, I should say, millennial designers, which are from the age of, let's say, 25 to 40. So the young designers were using also pastel colors. Let's start with the regular things, the effect of Pantone colors of the year on the sales. And to our amazement, we found that there is quite a strong effect when a, pastel col a Pantone color is announced. For example, the Pantone of 2020, it is the classic blue, which is in Jamie Wizard 210256. GIA medium, vivid, very slightly greenish blue or very slight uh, bluish green, whatever. This is the color that, they, uh, that was appearing in their uh, announcement. We saw that it certainly affected through our big data analysis the sales of regular fine quality blue sapphires, tourmaline in decolite, rose in 2020, and also topaz, the treated ones, like Swiss, London blue types, and spinel blue, hit the rocks. That was amazing demand for this color of uh, gems. The year 2021 had two colors um, uh, by Pantone. One was the illuminating yellow, the other one was gray, or they say ultimate gray. And we thought, okay. But we certainly saw a rise in demand for gray gemstones and diamonds. For example, gray diamonds, which before nobody wanted even to look at them, suddenly started having a market. Sapphires, gray. Tanzanite, unheated, untreated grays, spinels grays, and tourmalines. So there is certainly uh, an effect of the uh, gray color chosen by Pantone on the market. But we, in fact, what we saw, we looked at the research that we did a few years before, and we saw a growing interest or demand for the gray colors that I will talk about you uh, later. Also, a growth of the uh, demand for yellow, not that there was no demand before, but yellow diamonds rose up, and scapolite, yellow sapphires, tourmalines, etc. we saw certainly a rise. Well, to our amazement, other shades of gray like grayish purple, grayish pink, grayish blue green, suddenly start rising in demand. A lot of dealers, in order to improve the sales, add a story. And for example, they add the name lavender, silver, metallic, you know, any name that can help sell these amazing things. The thing that we found that, in fact, that most of these gray colors were offered in sets. That means, look at this set here, whatever, gray with a touch of green and blue in it, or up with a touch of uh, pink or purple in it. Somehow, they started being in rising demand, especially by youngsters, especially by the uh, millennials and enter more and more into their designs. Another trend that we saw is the entrance of teal color. Now, teal is a color of mixture of blue and green together with a touch of uh, gray. 
and sparkle, which reminds us, in fact, very much of the beautiful gems from our friend uh, De Montana person. These are exactly the colors that were very much in demand from the uh, Yugo mine, and uh, the colors uh, are very beautiful. However, let's say this, let's say five years ago, or a little bit more, wouldn't have been like a, um, it wasn't a compliment for a sapphire or a tourmaline to have this combination teal. Today, they prefer it, that on a perfectly blue uh, tourmaline, they prefer this teal color. Suddenly, those combinations, and we'll speak about it later, this combination suddenly became more and more in demand. And our friend, uh, I don't know if he's here with us, uh, Intergems published uh, Australian sapphires of teal, including a bird there. So we all know exactly what the color of this uh, teal uh, sapphires mean. Let me just take you now, with your permission, Okay, let me just analyze just in front of your e very eyes um, the colors that we are talking about. Let's go again. We will go to what we call the sampler. And now, just in front of your very eyes, I will pick up uh, a gray. Good. I will pick up a gray gem, and in front of your very eyes, this gem is analyzed, and you see, this is the actual image. Here is the analyzed image, and that's the color DNA. Look at what this is. Thousands of little spots, black, green, blue, to show you the combination here, and also here you can see the uh, combination of the gray with the green and the blue. This is the average color that was uh, put here, and um, uh, this is the uh, dominant, and that's the secondary color. That means within this stone, there are two of these colors. If I go now here into the um, actual uh, Jamie Wizard, you see that these teal colors are in fact in this area here. You see this area here, this is considered teal. Now, it can go uh, bluer, and bluer, you know, it's still this area is teal. This area is the gray, which we will talk later. If I go to the other side, you'll see that this area is greener and greener. This is still, this area is considered teal, and that's the gray of that particular uh, teal. Let's uh, close it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's analyze the color of gray. So you see what it is made of. Do I have a gray here? Uh, no, that's not exactly gray. Okay, we'll take that. Now, this gray is made out of, look at that, black, green, blue, etc., etc., and the place when I pick it up, you'll see that it's with a lot less uh, saturation and mainly with high tone, like in this area. You see, it's automatically analyzed and found to be here. That means this area is gray, and that area is the teal area or whatever. Now, the crazy thing is that if a few years ago you would have told people gray stones, etc., they would have, uh, you know, not wanting to see it. Today, the grayer, the better. It's crazy. They somehow, the young generation and the new modern world, maybe it's because the, of the uh, internet, maybe it's because they were at home in the corona, somehow they started accepting gray uh, colors. 
So things that 30, 40 years ago, or 20 years ago, or even less, in the rough that we used to buy in Africa, we used to kick aside and not even touch because they were junk supposed to be. You take them out now, all these gray sapphires from Umba, etc., and cut them, and people love somehow and accept these colors, and their prices is uh, rising, which is a big change in um, uh, our perception of uh, color. Okay, uh, let's continue. Year 2023 has, put, which started now, is what they call the magenta red colors, and has got a potential for the growth of rubellite tourmaline, rhodolite garnet, and of course, spinels of various colors, and ruby. Will this happen? I don't know because in the Bible it's written that prophecy was given to old people and idiots. And I'm not either of those, so I don't know prophecy, but probably. Another thing, crazy thing that we found that affects demand is royal weddings. Now this royal wedding of this lovely couple uh, got married with a nice uh, aquamarine. We saw definitely in our uh, uh, artificial intelligence growth of sales of good quality aquamarine. That was for sure in this time. Uh, mind you, the situation of the royal family now is not exactly possible, so uh, let's not talk about it now. I don't want to be blamed for anything there, but uh, that definitely affects. So, you know, the trends have all sorts of reasons to grow or go down. Another thing that we have found is the new mismatch. The craziest the, the combination of color, the better. And you see it here on the left down, combination of pink uh, and blue and dark blue, two colors of the grayish of things in the center, the drop, and the, the, the purple and the yellow. Somehow, any mismatch is an accepted thing in the new uh, trend and world. Just to prove to you, I'm showing you the latest Harry Winston. I hope he will not get angry with me. L look at that colors. Look at that thing on the, on the right. Pale pink with grayish green and, and uh, uh, very light uh, blue, etc. All this combination. Now, this looks very, very attractive to the, the young generation, and in fact, to the trade as a whole. Somehow, these color combinations are doing very well. We found that millennials prefer lighter material. When we looked at the things, certainly they don't like the dark ruby, sapphire, emerald, etc. They prefer, um, because those, they look to them like as if they've been treated or unreal or whatever. And on the medium, they accept it as a better thing. Somehow, crazy as it sounds, the lighter it is, the better it is. So look at the things here, a whiter shade of pale, all these light things on the right and on the, on the, on the left. All types of stones, I'm telling you, this type of stone 20 years ago would stay at the gemstone dealer forever. It stayed in my safe forever. But now they are very much in demand and they are accepted. The continuous trends that we find today that millennials, designers and customers seem to like gems of pastel colors, unique colors, and high demand for gray combinations such as those. Now, I thought that, that this was supposed to be my last uh, slide, the one before, but suddenly we talked so much about pigeon blood and, and commercial name that I decided to give my opinion about the thing. Now, pigeon blood, uh, Europe thinks that this is considered pigeon blood, 
uh, the Far East is a little bit more strict than us. And laboratories, <laughs> so uh, I don't know which pigeon it is, but uh, and this is from our data, yes, we, uh, we're actually analyzing, so, you know, okay. <laughs> royal blue, that's what our perception of royal blue, that's a beautiful color, etc., etc. Laboratories, <laughs> look at that thing here. Labo who would believe that this would receive it, either too dark or too light, etc. Somehow, uh, the laboratories are, are less strict than what we, as dealers even, believe. Is it to get more uh, customers? Ask other laboratories the things, because I also have a laboratory, so don't ask me. But laboratory somehow has increased the thing. Cornflower blue is pr practically accepted by all, except that the, there is a deep cornflower blue which was added here, but somehow laboratories and the public and the customers agree the trade in the vivid green, laboratories in the vivid green, very, very similar. Save the pigeons, they are killing too many pigeons. Uh, yeah. uh, how many pigeons do we have to kill to get all things? <laughs> now, j just before I leave, uh, for I wanted to show you the concept, Jerry Wizard original concept. We did 500,000 real gem images. Our system turned it into a, a 3D and of round and then in all the shapes in 2D. And then together with the GIA, we put it in the right position and we checked each one of them, color DNA, and posted it in the world of color. That's how we could do our um, system and the results that you see today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Menachem. You, you did it in 20 minutes. Yes. You are a champion. We still have nine minutes for uh, Q&A. Please feel free to ask. Yes, gentlemen over there. Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I think it's very interesting uh, to have an electronic system to define colors. It's all an issue when you cannot meet the, cl the client in person or you're doing sales online. Uh, but I just want to address the issue because uh, I see you define the, the color based on an image or a photograph. And it's always a challenge uh, to represent uh, the real color in photo. There's always a loss. If you take different devices, if you take a Samsung or if you take an Apple, you take a very different results in color. Depends on the time of the day, you got a uh, different color. So how do you address the issue? Because if you're taking the basis from a photograph, not from the actual stone. Since the first day of uh, Jamie Wizard in 2003, when we adopted it together with the GIA, that was the question. And it's a very important question. The thing is, we tell people how do we think it, they should take the photo. First of all, not forgetting that in the last 20 years, Everything moved to the internet. So all the colors that they see is on the lines and the internet. Apart from that, we tell people, use um, daylight, use it in a certain condition on a white paper, etc. Is it perfect? Not. The thing is that it gives us some information. We get millions of images that we analyze. Now, we don't tell you how to, uh, uh, is this image that the photo is really close to the thing because the person can tell you, this is my Burma ruby and change the color of the, of the ruby using his, uh, um, you know, uh, program on, on his computer and change it, make it a bit redder, etc. We check what we see. That means we receive this information, we see the things, and now we are working with big companies biggest possible, and they analyze their uh, gems in order to have a record. Now, they photograph the thing, they know that it's not perfect, the photography. However, they have a record of their color, and they have a record of what people liked and bought from them, and they have a record of what they sent to somebody. That's why one of the biggest companies 
uh, uh, from us the system for internally because they said before if they send the stone they were not sure that it's the same stone that came back until it was the, the, uh, the, the lady or the man that sent it actually saw it. But now when they have a record of the Jamie Wizard color, it's so is it perfect? No. But it's the way today to gather in information on a vast scale. Very good question. Is there any other question? I, I do have a question, actually, uh, Menachem, because one thing that, that, that is a very important question, the sensor yes, of yes, the machine. Yes, yes. But then you have the, the type of lighting, that color yes. correlated color temperature, yes, the distance course. between we the light it. and the sample. By the way, we also, I forgot to say, we send to the people um, uh, color calibrating uh, uh, gems that were measured so they can compare it to their screen and, uh, and, and uh, correct their screen. And exactly. people do it and uh, with again, I will not lie too much. Is it perfect? No. Is it better today than saying, I have a slightly purplish pink ruby, do you like it? And send him a picture that you played with? At least there is something that you say, you promised me a, a Jamie Wizard color 27554. Look at this. It's, 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 it's 22 something whatever. So there is a way of uh, improving the language among people. Again, is it perfect? No. I, I had actually didn't finish my, the question. Uh, I wanted to end up, you, you talked about the screen and the pleochroism and the cutting style and yes. the extinction and the uh, windowing, all that kinds of things that have to do with the proportions and also the orientation due to pleochroism. What, you, what would be your recommendation? What, what, what we do is normally we do um, uh, gem with an analysis from several directions. Um, uh, you know, it, it is... Um, we have our own lab also, so we do, if, for example, there's two kind of colors in the things, we do two. Again, mm -hmm. you cannot be, uh, the, f the main thing is the frontal uh, color. I think, um, no, I don't have a picture of it here, but we do uh, analysis of things, but in the lab, gems that come to us, sometimes we do three or four or five mm -hmm. analysis of each one and keep it in our records because people want to know to what it. Another thing is when there is a color change, sapphire ruby, which I have a certificate example here, we do a picture of the uh, photo of the uh, under uh, uh, warm uh, lighting and under cold lighting, and there is a uh, tremendous difference. Another thing that I wanted to say, and I still have 333 <laughs> minutes, we found that even if we take Five of our gemologists, which we have about 14, five of our gemologists in front of the same screen at the same time, mm -hmm. the same screen, and give them a, a gem to analyze the color in front of it, either in a photo or holding it, not all of them will give the same result because each one of us, our brains analyze the color slightly different. What I wanted to invent, I wanted to invent a chip that I can put in people's brain and we will all see perfectly the same color. So we will solve the problem as you wanted. No problem. Just give me time, I'll, 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 I'll invent this chip. Uh, that's really good, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Menachem. Thank you, Tola. Thank you very much, great. So um, color is something that I struggle with. And um, when he mentioned the, um, the, colors, the color change or the color shifts, which is within the same color, you just go one, one little thing uh, ahead, like in amethyst, for example. I'm sure that if you have photographed amethyst and even emeralds, you see the emerald or you see the amethyst, you take a photo, and then it's never correct. So it takes a lot of even post-production if you want to get it right. But anyway, uh, that's beyond the point. Our next speaker, while uh, Menachem are still, do you want, do you want uh, some help there so I can throw you out the stage? I'm, I, sometimes I forget that this is on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you Gemology skills are better than your talking <laughs> skills. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't mess with Menachem. He always have something to say. You always win, my man. Thank you. It's a pleasure.
and has a great sense of humor.